Hello. Um, um, my name is Luis Luaga. I'm from Lehigh University. Um, first, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. And I also want to thank um, everyone who is attending either in person or virtually. So today I'm gonna talk about, um, you know, Cubo reformulations about characterizing the best Cubo reformulations for constrained uh, combinatorial optimization problems. And uh, this is joint work uh, with um, some professors and students from Lehigh University, uh, David Bernal uh, from here at NASA, uh, and you know, a professor and a postdoc from Rice University. Um, you know, this project is um, mainly funded by a DARPA UNISC grant. And also we get support from Oak Ridge National Laboratory to access some quantum computing uh, resources. Okay, so the main idea of the talk is to give uh, an introductory uh, idea of the work we're doing, and then uh, we'll show some results uh, associated to uh, two constraint combinatorial optimization problems, the max case of graphic ordering problem um, and maximum cake of problem. And I will end with some final remarks and give time for questions. So I will just take a second to say that, um, you know, this is part of a larger group of work that uh, Lehigh University is leading on quantum computing and optimization. Uh, so we have this uh, queue called uh, Laboratory at Lehigh University. Uh, so what I'm presenting is some of the work of that team. Okay, so as I said, um, you know, we're, we're interested in this idea of queue reformulation. So of course, a queue is uh, just you know a quadratic problem uh, over variables that are the decision variables that are binary and you know two nice things about these queues is that um, you know quantum computers uh, being gate based or uh, quantum annealers are set up to solve this kind of general problem in particular, that means that they can solve this um, very famous uh, combinatorial optimization problem, the max cut problem, uh, which also captures this famous easy model in physics. Um, now, not every problem is naturally a cube. So what happens if the problem has constraints? Um, so this is an example. A, a stable set problem uh, it has these constraints here. Um, it means that uh, if two nodes in the graph, uh, there is an edge between those two nodes, those two nodes cannot be, uh, you cannot choose both of those nodes into your stable set. So of course, you can reformate this as a cubo by, you know, kind of, taking this constraint to the objective by penalizing it. Uh, so you basically put a penalization on this and you can uh, set uh, that to the objective. But, you know, here there are many different ways in which you could do that. Um, you know, here I present some examples of cube reformulation for the stable set that have been proposed. Um, so they have different uh, number of qubits and the range of coefficients that you see in the Hamiltonian or, or in the quadratic matrix of the QO uh, range a lot. So you could see that this one, the ex, you know, I call it exactly, has been formulated many times uh, by many authors. This is just as many nodes as qubits, as many qubits as nodes, and the coefficients range um, are either minus one or they could be greater than one. 
So of course, you know, the way you formulate these, the number of qubits, the range of coefficients uh, has an effect, important effect on uh, the capability of, um, you know, quantum computers to solve these problems. Um, so of course, uh, you know, then, you know, all these characteristics, number of qubits, the coefficients can affect uh, the convergence rate of the quantum algorithm of, of the quantum machine, the energy time it takes to solve the problem, the precision that is required to uh, solve the problem. So um, it's not surprising that uh, now many authors are not just coming up with a keyword formulation for problems, but actually looking for, you know, what is the best keyword formulation uh, for a given uh, constraint combinatorial optimization problem. And that's what here we have been working on. Um, so one problem is this uh, maximum case of graph uh, coloring problem. Um, so the idea, as the graph said, is you know, um, uh, try to, you know, given a number of colors, choose as you know the largest subgraph such that there are no two, there are no edges between two nodes of the same color. Uh, so if you give me one color, you know, I can take as a graph of four nodes, but if you give me three colors, uh, then I can actually uh, color all the graph. So this is a very famous combinatorial optimization problem. It actually appears in, uh, you know, in applications in telecommunications, in uh, circuit design, human genetic research. And as you can see, this is, ba this is you know, basically a generalization of the stable set problem, but it has these two constraints here. So the idea is to penalize these constraints in the best way. So what are our results? Uh, so this has a lot of detail. You know, I'm, not, I'm not interested in the detail, um, but what I would say is that here you see, you know, this is, a quadratic objective. You see here, C1 and C2 are penalizing these two types of constraints. Um, this is kind of a linear keyword formulation because you see the constraints here in linear form. What we have here is a full characterization of the penalty constant. So we know that you know the minimum penalization constant that would work is one. Uh, if you go less than one, then you can find graphs for which the Q reformulation is not a reformulation. Um, interesting, uh, interesting. Uh, um, when you put the penalizations at a minimum, uh, you know, C2, one, C2 equals one, we actually found that although the objective of the Q is the stable set of the graph, the, the sorry, uh, maximum k coloring subgraph of the problem, uh, the solution might not be feasible. The solution given by the Q might not be feasible. However, uh, the nice thing is that that solution can be made feasible just using a greedy algorithm. Um, so here we have a similar result. Uh, we just use a different formulation of the constraints, and this turns out to give a better formation because as you see here, uh, you know, here I had to introduce extra, this extra Q is S, I, J, R, and these extra Q is or variables T, I, but here I don't. Uh, again, we give a full characterization of, you know, the penalty constants, you know, for which penalty constants it works, what is the minimum penalization constant. Um, so again, that's important because uh, it allows us to study, okay, what happens? What, for example, what is the best penalization constant to use? Um, so now here we are comparing a little bit these two QR formulations. So one comparison is in terms of number of qubits, you can ask yourself how many, um, how, um, how many qubits are required to embed this problem, for example, in a quantum annealer. And uh, of course, you know, this linear formation that had extra decision variables take much more qubits to embed. So obviously this nonlinear qubit were 
not stuck if it's abuse, uh, it's, it's better. Um, you know, what about if we look at time to solution, right? So again, I wouldn't say that it's surprising, uh, this nonlinear uh, QR formulation, which uses much less number of qubits uh, when you put it through um, a, a, an annealer, you know, like D-Wave, um, you, get, you get better results. So here, you know, the blue is the nonlinear, the red is the linear, and we are, this is the time to solution uh, um, uh, to get 99% uh, close uh, probability of getting the solution. Um, okay, so, um, you know, something that I think is counterintuitive that we found is that you might think that, so this is, this is done with uh, penalization constants equals to one. You might think that maybe increasing a bit the uh, penalization constant uh, might help because it, it, it kind of forces the problem to become to look more into feasible solutions. Um, no, but uh, it, is, it is not the case. It is not the case, actually. So what happens is, uh, yes, so when you increase the penalization constant, theoretically, you gain a little bit in terms of convergence. But practically, because you're using num bigger numbers in the quantum machine, uh, the performance is uh, not good. So here, actually, I'm comparing with CPLEX. I'm not going to say that this comparison with CPLEX is, 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 is I don't know, uh, is, is done uh, fairly. Uh, but it gives me, it gives me um, you know, completely fairly. Uh, but it gives me an, an idea of what I mean with this penalization constant. Notice that here, if the penalization constants are one on one, uh, I could say that this Nonlinear Q actually solves the problem bigger, better than CPLEX, actually by orders of magnitude, this is a logarithm. But if I use larger penalization constant, now I'm not, I'm actually not beating CPLEX. So knowing what is the minimum penalization constant, what is the range actually helps to study that. Um, these are similar results. Now, um, now you have a good idea of the type of result that I'm finding. Uh, we have similar results for uh, the max scape cut problem. This is a generalization of the uh, max cut problem, in which instead of two cuts, I'm look for three, four cuts. It also has many applications in practice. As you can see, this is also a constrained combinatorial optimization problem. Um, you know, something interesting about this problem is that actually you can look at in classical machines, uh, these problems uh, show uh, that you know classical algorithms like branch and bound uh, start take you know you you see the characteristic that these algorithms could take exponential amount of time to solve the problem. So this is a good class of problems to see uh, you know what happens when we use quantum uh, computer. And again. You know, I'm not gonna don't have the time to go into details, but we have different keyword formulations for these constrained combinatorial optimization problems. But again, the key idea is that, of course, yes, we have to penalize penalize some constraints, but we completely characterize uh, what you know what is the minimum value of that penalization. So here, this is this is in terms of um, the parameters of the graph. Um, and again, you know, we know that these are the minimum uh, penalization constant for the for the keyword reformulation to to be uh, to be actually reformulated. Um, you know, this is another keyword reformulation in which I guess the difference is this one is a keyword reformulation in the sense that this is a quadratic problem over binary variables. Uh, this is not um, this is not what I think you see this product here. So this could be P is like a polynomial. It could be higher degree. It 
could be higher degree. And still, we characterize this. Uh, there are some methodologies to bring this cubo to be a cubo. So because the variables are binary, you can actually convert this, and there are different techniques to do it. Uh, and actually, we have what is called a reduce uh, uh, viewer formulation. That is, if you have a problem that is looking for k cuts, you can write it as a problem uh, with uh, k minus k minus one, uh, where you're looking for k minus one cuts. Um, so, for example, if you have a three cut problem, you can rewrite it as a two cut problem that is as a max, as a, an, as a normal k cut. Um, again, so we have characterizations of the penalization constants for these problems. Uh, now, in this case, you know, which cubo is better? Uh, we are performing currently uh, experiments to, to Check to check that you know, which of these queue is better. What is the range of, of penalization constants that 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 is the best to solve these problems in a in a um, based quantum computer or um, a quantum? Link. Okay, so I think my time is almost up. Um, I'll say that we have similar results for the knapsack problem. Um, one might think that the NASA problem is not the most interesting I mean, constraint community optimization problem because uh, that one is kind of easy to solve, but uh, you know, um, handling the constraint is, is, is not easy. Um, um, so how do you penalize that constraint? So if we want to penalize more general constraints, we better learn how to penalize the constraint in a NAPSAC problem. And here are some uh, links to, to the papers we have uh, on these topics. And now if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. Thank you very much.